All right, last few on inverse versus direct square law. So what happens if you have too much info in the question? Or how do you decide when you have too much information, what's a distractor? What's there just to confuse you? Um, so I have just, I think, two examples of those to help you figure that out. So this question is asking you, a radiograph of the knee is produced, has produced 100 uh, millisieverts of exposure. When 70 kbp and 10 mass were used at 100 centimeters. What new mass would be required at a distance of 180 centimeters to maintain original exposure? So whenever you hit a question like this or any question that's more than say a sentence, I recommend reading it twice. Read it once, normal speed, stop yourself. Go back, read it slowly. <clears throat> Excuse me, read every word of the question and then stop at the end and ask yourself, what is this question asking me to figure out, right? Um, so let's find the keywords. Let's kind of break it down. Um, so I highlighted a few things here. So what is this question asking me? It's asking me what new mass would be required at a distance of 180 centimeters to maintain original exposure. <clears throat> what does that tell me? It's asking me for a new mass to maintain original exposure. Instantly, I remember New mass at new distance is direct square law. So I know what formula I'm going to use. We're going to start to sort of pay attention to some distractors, things that are just in there just to make you question yourself or question, you know, what you're supposed to figure out. So I put those in orange. So it gave you an exposure, an intensity, right? And it gave you a KVP just for fun. So the KVP has nothing to do with this question. And the, um, well, I hope they're really not getting 100 millisieverts from a radiograph of the knee, but that was just an example, okay. So those are in there to distract you, to make you think, oh, am I supposed to do the 15% rule? Am I supposed to do the inverse square law? I see a KVP, I see a exposure here. No, the question is asking you for a new mass, maintain original exposure. So we're gonna go direct square law. So you're, are going to plug the information in. So ignore the distractors, they're there just for fun. Fill out your formula, and I use the list. You don't have to use the list, you could just plug it right in if you want. Um, MAS1 is 10 mass, we don't know MAS2. Distance 1 was 100 cm, remember, that has to be squared, don't skip that step. Distance 2, 180, squared, right? And then I plug them into the spaces, so MAS1, right across from that is distance one squared, right? They're directly across from each other, one, one, both twos on their bottom. Now this is asking me to figure out a new mass at a distance that's further away. Is my mass gonna go up or is it gonna go down? Anytime you increase distance, you're gonna need more mass. So we wanna go up in our answer, and when I plugged it in this way, I got 32 MAS. Is that what I want? Yes. If you put your distances in the wrong spot, your number went down, and that's not what we want, right? Okay, here's another example. Radiograph, um, radiographic exposure of the chest was taken at a distance of 180 centimeters using 5 mass and 85 kvp and had an exposure of 50 millisieverts. What would be the exposure um, at a distance of 203 centimeters? Again, I want you to stop. Go back through, read this question slowly, read every word, and then at the end, I want you to figure out what is this question really asking me? So we're gonna highlight that on this page here. So I read the last sentence. I go back to the last sentence. What would be the exposure um, at 203 centimeters? This question is asking me exposure. It's not asking me for a new mass, it's asking me exposure. And it has an exposure one of 50 millisieverts, and it has a distance one and a distance two. So anytime it's asking me either exposure, or it might be the word intensity here, that is gonna be inverse square law. And I always think intensity, inverse, um, so it could be millisieverts, it could be Sieverts, it could be gray, whatever they decide to use. But what formula are you gonna to use to figure this question out? You're gonna use the inverse square law. What are, what are the distractors? The distractors are these, this five mass and 85 kbp. The mass is in there just to confuse you. 
in hopes that it'll tri trip you up and you'll use the direct square law because you see an MAS. But the last sentence is not asking me for a new MAS, it's asking me for the exposure. So we're going to ignore that. That's in there just for fun. And the KVP is also in there just for fun, just to confuse you. So simply plug it into the formula and just remember inverse square law over here in the formula, the numbers are inverse. So I1 is across from D2 and I2 is across from D1. They should be diagonal from each other. So intensity or exposure is going to be inverse. So you're going to want to plug your numbers in. So I1 was 50 millisieverts. We don't know I2. D1 was 180. Remember, needs to be squared. D2 was 203. Again, needs to be squared. You want to plug these in correctly into your formula. So I1, we don't know I2, D2 squared over D1 squared. Also, what is this question asking you? It's asking you, if you move further away, what's going to happen to your exposure? If you move farther away from the fluoro table while the radiologist is fluoroing, are you going to get less dose or more dose? I'm going to hope you're going to say less dose, right? If you move farther away from that C-arm while it's running, are you going to get less dose? Yes. So we went from 180, we moved back from that C-arm to 203. Our exposure went down from 50 to 39. If you put these in the wrong spots, you're going to get a number that goes up and it's going the wrong direction. So if you know your basics, if I move farther from the source, my dose is going to go down. If you calculate it out and your number goes up, you have to stop yourself and say, oops, that uh, I must have put my formula in wrong. Okay. Just a quick follow up here. Slow down. Simply slow down when you hit one of these questions. Read it twice. Read it the first time, normal speed, stop yourself. Read it again, slower. Read every single word of the question. Simply ask yourself, what is this question asking me? Is it asking me for a new mass? If there's a new mass and a new SID, I know it's going to be direct. Is it a new exposure or new intensity? And a new SID, it's going to be inverse. So intensity and exposure will be inverse. When you go to plug in your formula, just remember, direct square with the MAS, the ones are directly across from each other, and so are the twos. When you're doing intensity or exposure, the, uh, the ones are diagonal from each other and the twos are diagonal, so it is inverse. Go back to your basics. If I move closer to the source, will I get more dose? Yes. If I move farther away from the source, will I get less dose? Yes, that's your basic cardinal rules, right? If I normally do something at 40 inches and I have to move to 72, do I need more mass? Absolutely. If it's an exam you normally do at 72, but now you move to 40, are you going to use the same technique? Gosh, I hope not. You're going to want to decrease your MAS and not overexpose. I hope that makes sense.